My name is Aaron Lopresti. I've been a comic book artist, a commercial illustrator, and a writer for over 25 years. And this is my YouTube channel. Okay, before we get started actually inking the Garbage Man page, I want to take a look at our tools a little bit and give you a little bit of an introductory lesson, if you will, to kind of get an idea of, of how to do a few things before I actually jump in and do them. Uh, but first of all, the things you're going to need is a big bottle to keep your water in to rinse your brush out in. So I've got a bunch of dirty ink water in there already primed for me. I've got my ink here. Um, I'm not going to recommend an ink because I keep trying different ones and I've found none of them to be 100% perfect. Uh, one thing you'll see on most bottles of Black India ink is don't mix these inks. Well, that's all I do. Um, if you get Higgins ink, which is a pretty popular brand, um, you'll find out that it's too gray for doing really good black work. If you're doing ink wash, it's pretty good right out of the bottle. Um, but what you can do is take the lid off of Higgins ink or some of the, another ink that you buy if you think it's too gray or too watered down. Uh, take the lid off and let it set for a couple weeks and let some of that water evaporate out of the ink and it'll be uh, blacker and thicker. But you got to be careful you don't let it get too thick because then it's, it's too hard to use. Uh, sometimes I will take uh, different inks and mix them with Higgins to get a blacker ink. Um, but again, that's pure experimentation so I can't exactly uh, recommend any specific combination because I keep changing it all the time. Uh, this I just tried. This is brand new. This is called Super Black India Ink and it's by Speedball. Um, it's worked pretty well straight out of the bottle. So I may start going with this regularly. We'll see. A Pelican ink used to be the ink to get, but it had lead in it. That's why it was so black and so they wouldn't allow it to be sold in the United States. And that was about probably 20 years ago now that they sort of uh, blocked that. Uh, I don't know if you can still get it in Canada or not, but um, anyway, so Pelican used to be the go-to, uh, but now we don't use that anymore. Um, my brush, this, um, you probably can't see it, but I'll tell you what it says. This is a, um, a Raphael Kolinsky, and the serial number on it is an 8404, and it's a number two brush. Um, this is very common size for brush inkers. I mean, there's a lot of pen inkers out there. In fact, the majority of people I think are pen inkers anymore. I'm old school. I'm a brush inker. Uh, the reason I started using a brush was because when I bought um, How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way by uh, Stan Lee and John Buscema, which is still a great book, by the way, when it came out in, I don't know, 76 or 77 um, or 75, somewhere in there. Um, that's what they recommended using was a brush because apparently that's what everybody was using back in the day. So I started learning on a brush. Uh, using a brush is very difficult. It requires um, a lot of practice and control. Uh, it's easier to use a pen, um, but ultimately inking comes down to um, your personal aesthetic and um, like any other part of art is being able to convey what's in your head onto the page effectively. First thing I like to do is wet my brush in the water and then I'll kind of kind of get the extra liquid off of it there because I don't want my ink too runny. Then I dip it in the the ink and then I'll kind of twirl it like this. So again I don't have too much ink on there and I can get my, my tip working. Um, I want to go over a few things on feathering first of all. Well actually let's step back and when you're doing an outline of a character you can do two things. You can have a pretty even line or depending on the angles and, and things you're dealing with you can vary that line to get different different width. Um, I tend to prefer to go this way rather than the this the straight sort of even line this can look get to looking too slick which then might give your your um, 
your work a feeling of like it's porcelain or something and kind of ink the life out of the drawing, which you don't want to do, by varying your width on your holding lines around your uh, characters, um, it gives it a little bit more sense of energy and it replicates a little bit more of that sort of loose energy feel that, that's in the pencils that you don't want to lose as an anchor. Um, and the reason, the way you do this is simply by pressure, okay? So if I have a very light touch, I'm going to have a very light line, okay? But what I can do is I can start with a light line, and then by increasing the pressure on the page, and then lifting up, and then pushing back down, and then lifting up, you can vary the thickness of that line pretty easily. If you're doing a pen, it's really hard to get that sort of variable line like that. So basically, you, if the pen, you lay down a line, then you go back over that line to thicken it up, then you go back over that line to thicken it up if you want to. Uh, where with a brush, you can just push, lift up, push, lift up, push, and you can get a, uh, a variance uh, pretty easily. The thing with a brush is, you don't want to go too fast and you don't want to go too slow. If you go too slow, your line will be shaky. And that's true of a pen too. If you go, if you go too fast, you're not going to be able to control your line and, and get it the way you want it to look. So it's kind of this uh, difficult thing of, of finding a happy medium. And again, it's all about practice, practice, and practice. Okay, let me go over a few tips of uh, feathering here uh, before we get started. Um, generally speaking, you want to do your outlining work um, first. Um, as soon as you dip your brush, the first thing you should want to ink is the outline, okay? Because you're gonna, you're, your brush is going to be loaded up with ink, and it's harder to do a fine line feathering when you have too much ink on your brush, okay? One of the reasons we use a number two brush is it's contrary to thinking. You think that, you know, oh my gosh, if I get a, a point, if I get a one um, or a point oh one, um, you know, the, it'll be give me a finer point, and that is absolutely not true. Uh, the longer the bristles are on the brush, the more length it has to fold over into a really nice point. Um, so actually, the bigger the brush you have, the better point you're probably going to be able to get with your brush. The problem with that is the bigger the brush is, the more ink it holds. Okay, so if you're if you're holding a three, for example, which I believe Michael Golden uses, that's a pretty heavy brush. You can get a great point with it, but it's carrying a lot of ink. So you have to really have a sensitive touch to make sure that you're not, um, that your, your fine line work, that you have control over it so it doesn't get too bold because of the amount of ink that's in it. Okay, so we're going to dip first. I'm going to get rid of that extra ink. And I'm twirling my brush to make sure it's in a nice point. Okay, <clears throat> if I have a solid black area like this, that I'm, there's two ways you can feather, do your line work, okay? You go into the black or you go out of the black. When you're going into the black, it gives you more control because you're starting light and pushing heavier to get a, a thicker base like this. Okay, <clears throat> and I did these pretty far apart, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Um, normally, uh, when I'm doing a feather line, I, they would be much closer together and probably even finer. But you can see the point I'm trying to make. You start with a thin line here, and you press down, and it gets thicker as it goes into the black. This creates the illusion, then, that the black, that these lines are coming out of the black, merging out of the black, to create this artificial gray, which is really the the, the point of doing feathering lines like this, right? So you can, let me make sure I'm still on camera here. So again, you're going to start with a thin line, very light touch, and you're going to press as you get in closer to the black. Okay. The other thing that can help you, especially if you're doing a wide or a larger line is locking your wrist, okay? 
so that you're only turning from your wrist and you're making that turn exactly the same every time. That wasn't very good. That's better. So that helps me with my control as well as is locking into a movement and creating the same curve through a, a series of feathering lines. Um, the other way you can do this is what I would call the Wrightson version. And that's your inking out of the black. This gives you less control, and it, but it gives you a little bit softer or looser look. So in other words, if I want to feather out of this black, I'm going to go just the opposite. I'm going to press heavy and pull up. That was horrible. Um, there we go. So I'm pressing heavy and then lifting up as I pull as I pull out from the black to create the thinner line. This is a little bit harder to maintain your control, and that's why, again, it depends on what look you're going for, right? This is going to give me a looser, softer look. This is going to give me a more controlled look. It, it all depends on what you want your finished art to look like. But those are the two ways you can handle um, your feathering. So again, really quickly, you either feather into the black, starting lightly and pushing heavy as you get into the black, boom, like that. Boom, like that. Boom, like that. That was a terrible one. But anyway, you can see on those three. Or you can come out of your black simply by pressing and then lifting up as you make your line. Um, and those are basically the, the two ways you can do it. Um, inking with a brush, or at least your line work. And when we get into inking the Garbage Man page, which I'm going to show you in just a minute, uh, I'll, I'll end up using both of them for varying reasons, and I will discuss and, and uh, tell you why I'm using them as I do. So let's move on to that. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. You can also hit the notification button to get alerts when I post a new video. Make sure you come back by soon so you can check out my next episode.